Hi, I'm Barbara Bernstein from BetterTeachingNow.com and in this lesson we're going to talk about adding and subtracting positive and negative numbers. So first I want to talk about what a positive or negative number actually means. You might have, let's say, zero at one point. Uh, imagine that we were talking about how cold it is outside and it's a very, very hot day over here if you've got like 100 degrees. But it's a very nice day somewhere around here if you're talking about 70 degrees and it gets colder and colder. And maybe somewhere around here you're talking about 32 degrees. I'm speaking of Fahrenheit. Um, 32 degrees is where water freezes. But sometimes, depending on where you live, the climate is very cold and it gets all the way down to zero degrees Fahrenheit. But what happens when the weather gets colder than zero degrees Fahrenheit? Well, you have to have some way of representing that numerically. So you actually go below zero. You can go one degree below zero, two, three, etc. as it gets colder and colder, and those are called negative numbers. And there are other ways that you can think of this. When we talk about sea level, the water comes up to uh, if, if there's a big flood, we might say that water rose above sea level. Or you might talk about some place where the water is below sea level. And if sea level were like at zero, the amount below sea level would be negative numbers. So the concept of numbers being positive and negative is all around us um, and has many applications. Now, what I'm going to try and do is do some problems on a number line. So let me try and do this. As the numbers go further to the right, the value or the, the gets bigger and the numbers get bigger. But as we go below zero, we're going to talk about a negative 1, which means 1 below 0. And then this will be a negative 2, which is 2 below 0. This is negative 3, or 3 below 0. This is negative 4. This is negative 5. This is negative 6, negative 7, etc. 3 plus 2. Well, you've done that all your life. You know that 3 and 2 is 5. When there's no sign, positive or negative, put on a number, it's always assumed to be positive. So when you're adding two numbers that are positive, you just add them together the way you're used to, and the sign is positive. So we don't have to write a positive sign if, if, if it is the sign is positive. But let's suppose that we are starting at negative 3. And we want to add, let's say, 6. Well, when you add 6, you go forward by 6. So if you start here, you're going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. I get up to positive 3. And remember, you could think of this as being its minus 3, it's 3 degrees below 0, and the temperature warms up by 6 degrees, then you're going to be 3 degrees above 0, which is positive 3. That's a way of thinking about that. If I'm at 8, I mean, sorry, at 10 on my number line, and I want to subtract 8, I go back 8, and I'm going to get to 2. But that's really the same thing as 10 adding a negative 8. This also means going back, and I'll get to 2, because I'm going back 8 spaces, or 8 numbers. Now, what does it mean if I have, let's say, um, 7, and I want to subtract a negative 3? Well, let me give you a little example to explain to you what subtracting a negative means, or how that works. Suppose one day you, you know, you had a little bit of a headache, you didn't feel that great, and you were very bored with what you're doing in school, you didn't really feel like going anyway, and you said to your mom, 
you know, I have kind of a little bit of a headache, Mom. I I'm not going to school today. And your mom might say to you, you are not not going to school today just because you have a little bit of a headache. You are not not going to school today. She's, you're saying you're not going to go, but when she says you're not not going to go, that means she's telling you you are going to go. You know, she's saying you cannot stay home. You're going to have to go to school. So a minus a negative number is the same thing as adding a positive number. If I were subtracting 3, um, if I were just subtracting a positive 3, I would go down 3. But I'm subtracting something that's the opposite of a positive 3. It's a negative, so I, I move up to a bigger number. And this is equal to 10. Because it's the same thing as 7 plus positive 3. Let me write out um, a chart that may help you understand why this works that way. Okay, suppose I take 10 minus 3, understood to be minus positive 3. That's 7, right? Now if I take 10 and I subtract positive 2, I'm not taking as much away from 10. So it should be a bigger number. 10 take away only 2 leaves me with 8. Now suppose I say 10 and I take away just 1, even less. That's going to leave me with 9. 10 take away 1 is 9. Suppose I have 10 and I take away nothing. So if I say 10 take away 0, that's 10. I didn't take anything away. Now, if I say 10 take away negative 1, notice that I've been subtracting less and less. 3 to 2 to 1 to 0. So the pattern is that my answers keep getting one number bigger. And that pattern has to remain consistent. So 10 take away a negative 1 is going to have to be the answer for 7, 8, 9, 10. It has to be, it has to be one number bigger than when I took away nothing, taking away a negative 1. So you can see that this was really the same as 10 plus positive 1. And likewise, 10 minus negative 2 is going to have to be 12, because it's going to have to be, if I take away negative 2, look at it this way. I'm taking away negative 2. Compare that to taking away nothing. Look at the 2. If I took away nothing and I had 10, taking away a negative 2 would have to make it so that it's more by 2. So this would have to be 12. The pattern has to be consistent. That's another way of kind of understanding why subtracting a negative is equal to adding a positive. So here's our rule. If you have a number, say, 8, and you're going to subtract 3, that's the same thing as saying 8 plus negative 3. If you have 8 and you're subtracting, say, a negative 5, that's the same thing as 8 plus a positive 5. I suggest that any time you are adding or subtracting positive and negative numbers, you take your problem and change all the subtractions to additions. Change the sign of the number after it so that you're always doing the adding of positive and negative numbers. When we add positive and negative numbers, if they are the same sign, we add them up and use a sign. If you're adding positive and negative numbers as here, if they have different signs, of course, 6 is understood to be positive 6, positive 6 and negative 4. If you have two numbers that you're adding and they're different signs, you subtract the difference between what we call the absolute value of the numbers, which is just the number itself regardless of its sign. Take the difference in the absolute values and use the sign from the bigger number. I'm going to change this so it's all an addition problem. 
So I'm going to change it to 4 plus negative 2. All right, this one was already addition. And this one, to change the subtract to add, I change from negative to positive 1. And now this is a much more manageable problem. The 4 and the 1 are both positive. They add up to 5. Minus 2 and minus 3 adds up to negative 5. I made up this problem. It's by coincidence that it had a kind of a cool answer. 5 plus negative 5 is 0. OK, let's do just a couple more problems. Let's say we had minus 8 minus 4. And just, just make it a short problem. All right, this is negative 8. And this is a subtraction sign. There's no sign on 4, so it's understood to be positive. So this is negative 8. Instead of minus positive 4, I'm going to say plus a negative 4. So it's kind of like you have negative 8, and you're going back 4, which brings you to negative 12. And it follows our rule, because we add the 8 and the 4 together to make 12, and then we use the sign that's on both of them. Um, how about this? Suppose we had negative 8 minus negative 3. Well, I want to take negative 8, and then I want to change my subtraction to adding, change the negative 3 to positive 3. And the answer here is the difference between the two numbers, which is 5, and then I use the sign of the larger. So this is, if you started back here at negative 8, and you went subtract negative 3 is the same thing as adding 3. 1, 2, 3, you would get to negative 5 when you add the 2. Now let's do some problems that involve fractions. So we can kind of see how this works using what we already have learned. Suppose we had 3 halves minus negative 4 thirds. OK? Minus a negative is the same thing as plus a positive. I can always change subtraction to add addition, but then I must change the sign of the number after it. So this, is, this problem equals this problem. Now, I've got to get a common denominator. So what can I do? to get a denominator that's the same, which is the only way I'm going to be able to add fractions. Well, if I have 3 halves and I multiply it by 3 over 3, I will get 9 sixths. And I'm trying to add to that something that's thirds. And if I take 4 thirds and multiply it by 2 over 2, that's going to be 4 times 2 is 8, 3 times 2 is 6. So this plus this equals 9 6 plus 8 6. And that's 17 divided by 6, or 17 6. It's so hard to say. This is the same thing as 17 divided by 6, which looks like this. That's 2. 6 into times 2 is 12. And then 12 from 17 is 5. So we have a remainder of 5. Or we can write this as 5 sixths. So this number is equal to 2 and 5 sixths.